welcome to this video. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your time on a cloudy afternoon in southern Spain. And that is why all my phalaenopsis are outdoors, because it is overcast and I had to throw all my other plans and projects I had in store for today out the window because overcast, Phalaenopsis care, maintenance, soaking, etc., is best done, especially when it's overcast. Hence, we have the Phalaenopsis on the table today, and they're all getting a calcium and magnesium soak. And also, you might be wondering why are those blooms pointing up in such a weird direction? Hey, <laughs> well, basically, you're seeing the end result before actually seeing what I did because I had technical sound issues <laughs> throughout the video. I unpotted three fowls, I cleaned up the root system on three fowls, and I repositioned the fowls into their pots the way I want them to be long term, seeing as long, long time ago I did not stake my orchids what I consider now the right way. It was all a little bit haphazard. Now yeah, it'll be fine. And we have problems. The orchids were coming out of their pots, leaning with the weight of the leaves, growing the way they like to grow and well subsequently we had to dive in so there will be a little bit of silent movie with some commentary on the side and keep in mind you'll see aerial roots being chopped viable roots being chopped and just stick through the video we are going to get audio back and timestamps will be in the description so let's go so what I used to do in the past is put sphagnum moss on the top of my media. You can see that this orchid is pretty old in my collection because of sphagnum moss. Now I have moved to using microfiber and I used to switch the sphagnum moss out just in case there was any kind of degrading of the freshness of it. And then <laughs> check out that staking system. I thought I could counteract the leaning of the orchid in and over the pot by putting a stake into its way so that the one leaf that's up against that stake would hold the orchid up. Wrong. On top of that, I also have a lot of aerial roots that I have tried to keep hydrated and shocker, they are going to get cut because they will have to go into the pot when we reposition this orchid. Every time I soak these roots, they do not get pliable enough so that I could, you know, twist and turn them into the pot. So this is me sort of like, okay, just guesstimating how much of that root system I'm gonna cut off and we'll take it from there. But first of all, of course, we gotta get an orchid out of the pot. This orchid was never repotted since I put her into semi-hydro. I'm very happy that she actually survived my transition process back in the day when all I did was just go in with no consideration of temperature, with no consideration of time of year, and I would clean the orchid and pot her up and fill up with Lekka, as you do, as is the norm. I'm really happy that this one made it. She was potted up in 2019. Another thing that should happen as well is that if you transition a phalaenopsis into Lekka and self-watering or any other different media than bark is to take into consideration just how much flushing is required. I didn't do that with this one and I got away with it. You can see that there are beautiful roots in the pot even though I have black root tips and those are a result of not enough flushing and we'll just take them off. Another thing as well, every transition into a new media like inorganic Lekka self-watering would also require a repot after two or three months of the orchid being in the pot to remove the dead roots that have declined after transitioning, which is normal. I didn't do that either. So you see, I've been breaking quite a few rules when I started moving my orchids into Lekka and self-watering. And that's absolutely not a problem. You can see it's not a must. They say it's best practice, but it is not a must. Personally, my window of growth here in southern Spain for Phalaenopsis orchids are only like three to four months before the temperatures drop again in October. And that is, of course, the signal for a Phalaenopsis to start spiking complex phalaenopsis hybrids. That's what I'm talking about here. So you see, it's July. I have to do this whether I've got new root growth or not. Normally I wait. I need new root growth. But in this case, I am in July. I have stable, steady evening temperatures. Oh, a growing root tip. I'm cutting it off. The end is desiccated, yet the root is growing in the pot. It's got to go just because we're cleaning this thing up and it has plenty of other roots to work with. But yeah, 
I only have July, August, September, October, that's four months for the orchid to put on vegetative growth. And that is why I'm going in, doing what I'm doing, preempting that in the next three weeks, roots will start. So I'm ahead of the game, but I have enough years behind me doing this with these orchids that if I don't make some form of a mistake that actually then becomes a detriment to the orchid and she declines for those reasons, I can go ahead and do what I'm doing even though I do not have active root growth that I can see above the pot. I was also doing some pest maintenance prior to the repositioning of my Phalaenopsis orchids that needed it the most. And uh -huh, I missed some scale. Now my Phalaenopsis, for some reason, they attract scale. And what I used to think in the past, stem rot because of my misting onto the sphagnum moss, etc., I always thought I was too heavy handed and for that reason, I got stem rot. What I didn't realize was, until closer inspection of removing the leaves, that the stem had accumulated a scale infestation on the orchids that I lost. And for that reason, all my Phalaenopsis died. That is not to say that I am now not being very, very pedantic about when I address my fowls and when I work with them to repot them or acclimate them into a setup that is now LECA and self-watering. I will always, always respect my temperatures. But I am gutted about the orchids that I lost in the past because I was not aware of scale. I treat with garlic alcohol the structures, the leaves, the stem, and that is why it's good to do it on an overcast day because everything's happening outside and it wasn't a hot day so i have now learned that evaporative cooling is also something to take into consideration if it's hot the evaporative cooling of the alcohol will cause leaf damage and all these factors over the past years i have come to recognize and realize and that's what i'm applying today hence all my plans went out the window when i saw it was overcast and not windy so scale is an issue and when i have treated my structures the leaves undersides the stem with garlic alcohol alcohol. Well, what do you know? In 2021, I never treated the spikes for scale. I never painted them with garlic alcohol. So guess what happened? Exactly. Yeah. Scale attacked my spikes and then went into my blooms. But none of the structures had any scale. So we haven't lost an orchid because of scale since I recognized what is going on. And I do a garlic alcohol treatment every four months, maybe every six months, depending on what I see. And here we are. I missed some scale on the underside of that leaf. So what I did in the kitchen as well was take all the lecker that was in that pot. I have separated it out. I've washed it, just rinsed it out. It's the same lecker that was in the pot. You can see it's mixed large and small. And I've just put it into a separate pot because we're going to be reusing that lecker. It's not dirty. It doesn't need all the treatment. And the orchid is over on the chair waiting its turn while we address the next one. So same thing here again. This is Walter, and you can see how desiccated the leaves are. Clearly, there's a problem in the pot. And not just because she's leaning out of the pot, but I have a feeling that <clears throat> we don't have many roots in the pot. A little bit of a breeze, and that orchid would have just fallen out and onto the floor. We got to it in time. Also, no active root growth at all, but I am anticipating new roots coming soon. Oops. Yeah. <clears throat> And that doesn't look good at all. But there's enough there to work with. And you can see, again, I didn't flush this orchid when I transitioned her. Flushing is fundamental. Anything that you put into a pot, if you're transitioning into inorganic media and you're trying to encourage root growth, flushing, flushing, flushing. It pulls the roots that are growing into the pot because they want to be where the oxygen exchange is. And this sounds as if I'm saying oxygen exchange means airflow. No. Water has oxygen in it as well, and that is what we want to have. Oxygen around our roots, be it the aerial roots have air around them, which has oxygen, but the roots in our pots also want oxygen, and that is what water provides. Besides, if you flush every second day when it comes to a transition, you are pulling fresh oxygen from the air by way of gravity through the pot. This you can see here with all the roots around the top. That is because of no flushing. They kind of stop growing. A little bit of maintenance, a little bit of cleanup, just primping and preening these roots so that we have her nice and clean before she goes back into the pot.
So my steaks are the Phalaenopsis steaks that we get when we get them from the store. But because most of them are wooden, I put a lot of sellotape around the base also to buffer for the gap the size of the hole and then I just put the steak through and be done with it. That is the Lekka from Walter and we are segregating that one as well. On to the next one. All right, here is Harlequin growing a new leaf, not seeing any signs of root growth either. Hakuna Matata, but oh my goodness, aerial roots to contend with, leaning way out of the pot. And yeah, those roots are not going to go into the pot. So just going to cut them to a length that I'm comfortable with. See if they hydrate, see if they're going to be pliable enough. I doubt it very, very much. But before I go all ninja on those roots, let's see what we've got in the pot at least give me something to work with. Okay, this one's giving me a lot more resistance. This is a good sign. I'm loving it, but you can see how clean the lecker is pouring out. There is not much debris in that pot. Ho oh, and poof is in the pudding. Now I need to find a knife to <laughs> dislodge the roots that are stuck to the side of the pot. So Harlequin was doing really, really well. Also, never cleaned up since it was potted up. This is the first time I'm taking Harlequin out of the pot since I've got this orchid. And boom! Woohoo! I am loving this. Oh my goodness, even seeing just Velamen at the top. Look at all the branching in the pot. Those are viable roots. Now, I do not guesstimate how they will respond if I don't take that stuff off whether they will die or not, but seeing as I've got plenty of roots to work with, I am just going to take everything off that I see that needs to be taken off. No holds barred. Harlequin stem is also extremely long. Now, it is okay to cut the stem if you want to, but seeing as my pot is still deep enough and large enough, any excessive cutting that I'm going to do, I will avoid the stem as best as possible. There is no need for it at this point in time. It feels firm, it's not rotting, it has been in a very wet environment for the past four years and well, I'm not going to be cutting anything off at the base of that stem just to shorten it. My main concern is to get the orchid up and into the pot and here we have a root that is actually somewhat firm where it is at the end of my finger and then you can pull off the velame and that one is so close to being gone might as well get rid of it but yeah i don't cut the stem for the purposes of cutting the stem it doesn't bother me clearly it's not rotting it'll be absolutely fine i don't want to stress these orchids more than i am stressing them by chopping off some of their roots just because now i do want them back in a position that i'm comfortable with and that is enough stress right there simply because I cannot grow mine mounted and my media will not hold on to the roots that have just been newly repotted. She was secure in the pot, but the weight of her lean and the length of her leaves, the bigger she gets one day with the wind or something, she is just going to flop over and take the whole pot and the leka and it will land on the floor. This orchid is heavy. I have to control the lean Otherwise, I wouldn't be bothered. Having my Phalaenopsis lean and flop over, I have no problem with that. I find that very, very pretty. But there was no stake in this pot prior to holding her back from getting too heavy and leaning to one side. So I'm buying myself another three or four years and hopefully she will be with us another three or four years. Oh, I cracked that root. That sucked. It was nice. That was not part of the plan for me to <laughs> cut off. It wasn't... <laughs> on the menu for that but uh, yeah anyway that crack even though the root is accustomed to being in a wet environment when there's a crack I normally cut a crack off so that's a shame and you can see where I cut the aerial root off it is absorbing water but it is not flexible enough in that case even though it's absorbing water it's not one of those roots that are going to be bendy bendy anyway leaving that on gonna make my decision once I pot up the orchid and see how she sits in the pot once I straighten her out and bingo check this out the first little root nubbin at the base this is what I was hoping for we are good with our timing even though I don't see any active root growth I know from the climate the temperature the month time of year it's okay to do what I'm doing and the roots will follow afterwards while the orchid is already in position and my audio is back 
Well, 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 and so is the sun. Oh my goodness. Well, <laughs> first things first, at least I've got my audio back, which is awesome, but I also have to get those out of the sun because that's not happening while I'm focusing on the big ones to get them back in their pots and <laughs> be right back. Isn't this just the cutest seating arrangement ever? All right, we're gonna mist all the roots one more time and then in order of getting them out of the pot, we're gonna put them back in the pot, starting with lemon sherbet, but oh, I love the visual. <laughs> How cute is this? <laughs> All right, let's get some wire on, talk through one of them, and then we're just going to speed things up. I want wire on before the orchid goes in, just to make sure that if there's so much jiggling and maneuvering going on, it will not affect the position of the orchid while I'm working on her. Right, wires facing away from where the leaves will go. I want her in the middle, so that for the next two or three years when I'm not intending on bothering her at all, she can start leaning her way out of the pot at her leisure, but I want her in the middle first. She's going to do what she's going to do whether I stake her or not, but she's not going to be lifting herself out of the pot. So I have this aerial root here that I'm still kind of wondering if I should maintain it, save it, hold on to it, or make my life easier and cut it. But let's just see how we can go getting that root in. at least for the interim. If it's going to fail, it's going to fail, but for the interim, we have support. That's all looking wonderful, that crack. And this is the moment where I just go and take my wire and secure the orchid before even putting Lekka in, because I have her in the right position. I also have her in the right height. I don't like that this root is above the wire, so I'm gonna try and see if I can put it below the wire. Anything to encourage roots to go into the pot. My aim is not to get her upright. That's not the point of the exercise. My aim is for long-term stability in the pot that she doesn't lift herself up and out as we've seen others do. This is the thing when they get old and established, they get heavier and heavier. And of course, they want to be growing upside down, and it's perfectly understandable. And to be honest with you, I wish I could let them do that. I wish I could just slap every one of them into a tree and just be done with it, but my climate won't permit that. So I'm not trying to garrot the stem by no means. Just making sure the wire doesn't slip off the stake. I still want space between the stem and the wire. And I'm liking what I'm seeing here, so we're just gonna secure this little end around the back. Come sa. All right, and you may know that I use a lot of water when I repot my orchids. I fill the pot with water. However, you can see what's going on here. Everything is buoyant, everything is loose. I'm gonna now work with the weight of the lecker to secure the orchid, but I'm not going to be chucking the lecker in, as in, you know, taking a pot and just throwing it in. I'm going to be doing it one bit at a time. And I'm working my way with the lecker only in the front, because if I start filling around the back of the pot, I'm using the force of the lecker to push the orchid forward, which is just not what we want. It's not part of and parcel of what we're trying to achieve here by repositioning her. So this is what we're going to do. It's a bit cumbersome, a bit tedious. It would be so much easier to just take a pot and chuck in the lecker, but I don't want that. I'm still mindful of the velamen, but I can't use the protection and buoyancy of water to make it gentle on her. Gotta let go, I dropped a lecker bead, and that is not good for any of the four-legged pups running around here. Always holding on to the orchid. Always. So paramount when it comes to repositioning. 
Now we can just see where we're at and pour the rest in. What I did not mention earlier is I bumped this orchid up from an 18 centimeter pot to a 20 centimeter pot, mainly because I wanted those area roots to fit. And I have a root here that is used to being in a much, much more wet environment. So I need to take that into consideration. And I'm going to have to place a microfiber around that until it hardens off because I don't want it to dry. Well, in my opinion, this is an utter success. Even though the blooms are now pointing upwards, but hey, <laughs> she's in the pot. She's safe. Moving on to the next one. All right, let's make Walter happy again. Walter has such few roots, I'm going to get the branch of this aerial root in the pot and see what happens with that one. Long term, we'll just have to wait and see. Do I like the height? Yes, I do. And now I can pinch my wire off. Now, I'm going to use this spike to secure my orchid. Instead of the stem. Do we like this, the idea of the spike long term or the stem? What would we prefer? We're going to use the spike to begin with and should the needs arise for us to have to be a little bit more radical, then I shall secure Walter via the stem, giving me an option here. Always making sure whether the orchid is shifting in the pot. Ta-da! Me like it. Me like it a lot. Yeah, that feels so much better. Two down. Mr. Arlikin, Venaki. Let's go. Going back in the same pot, standard rinse of just the lecker that was used before. Unless something goes horribly wrong, there should be nothing to see here. <laughs> Let's see if I need to cut the aerial roots a little bit more. Because if I have to, I will. You see how big this orchid is, that's why I just don't want to risk anything at this point in time. Bring on the new roots, get the new roots into the pot. If the aerial roots are too stiff to do the curling for me now, then I shall take them off. Now you can also put the roots in the pot and turn the orchid. That is if the roots are pliable and this one is not doing that at all. So, unfortunately, They're coming off, the stubborn ones. It's the same size pot as before. So the orchid probably has leaned out so far that she's gotten so big root wise. Where's my resistance? Why is this one not going down further? Let's just put her hand where the pot would be. That's that. And of course she was leaning out a lot in the previous pot. So there's that length and that's what we're going to take off to accommodate what we need now. How about now? Nope, the resistance is over here. Still. Can I work with that kink? And there's another one. And that, this one just cracked when I tried to find the resistance. So I took that off. And now I've got only resistance from the long aerial root, which was fitting in beautifully before. Let's try this again. Now she's still a little bit higher in the pot than I would like, but I'm not cutting more off. I think we've done enough. And I'm going to secure her along the stem because this is a big one. And she is super heavy. Even though she doesn't have that many leaves at the moment, you wouldn't think so, but huh. Let's think that in two years time, we still don't want to be messing around with her in the pot. So that's what I'm going to be planning for, just to keep her solid. And I'm going to use the other wire to use around the spike. I'm going to give ourselves two opportunities to keep her solid. I'm just going to loosen the wire around the stem a little bit. In the eventuality that we're getting new roots, I want them to make it and not be cut off by the wire. Also get it high enough, new root tips can come out. 
That should do. Feels nice and solid. Woohoo! I know. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Four years ago, when I was doing my LECA transition and all that business for my orchids, and especially the fowls, where I was having difficulty getting them established, every root was precious. And look at the evolution. The name of the game now is get the orchid in the pot and don't worry about the roots. <laughs> it should be fine. I am 80% positive it's gonna work out fine. The 20% is my backup plan that root season growing is happening as we speak. It's just that we haven't seen it happening yet with the exception of Harlequin and that little root nubbin. In here are the three musketeers that we've worked on. I'm very happy that this is done. I thought it was going to be much more laborious, but I found a groove, a rhythm. You know, the old adage of work smart, not hard. And eventually it worked out. So I appreciate it if you watch to the end of the video, any questions, any concerns you may have with regards to me cutting off aerial roots, potting up aerial roots, and cutting off roots that are well established in the pot simply because I want to put an orchid into this, this, this position. Any concerns, if you were to do it yourself, are there gonna be negative repercussions? Let me know all of that in the comments. Really appreciate the fact that you stuck around to the end. I am grateful for your support. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.